This is Dr. Harold Pierre. Thank you for choosing me as your doctor. For all other listeners, please consult your physician to determine how this information applies to your care. Is Kratom the new legal high, or as I call it, the legal opium? Kratom is an herbal extract that comes from an evergreen tree found in the Southeast Asian countries of Thailand and Malaysia. The leaves are harvested, dried, and then processed into a powder that can be consumed as hot or cold beverages or packaged into capsules. The West became aware of Kratom through the works of botanist Peter Korthels. But to the people of Thailand and Malaysia, Kratom has been consumed for centuries. In low doses, this herbal extract has a stimulatory effect. But as the total dosage increases, it takes on an opioid-like property. And it is this second effect that is most concerning for addiction. To date, there has been many reports of significant overdoses causing illness and death. Since the kratom-related deaths are increasing, it is important that we seek help from the latest scientific evidence to make the safest choices. The first authors to describe the effects of long-term use of kratom was Darshan Singh and colleagues in this 2014 article published in the Drug and Alcohol Dependence Journal. Their study measured several factors, including dependence, withdrawal, cravings, and concluded that kratom use may lead to dependence and other clinical characteristics we know of as addiction. In this cross-sectional study, 293 male regular kratom users defined as those who have used Kratom for at least six months, were recruited from the Southeast Asian country of Malaysia. The Kratom users were separated into two categories, one for short-term users or those using Kratom for six months to three years, and the other for long-term users or those defined as using Kratom for more than three years. Urine toxicology testing was performed to exclude subjects who tested positive for other substances to make sure that the reported symptoms could not be attributed to any other drug. The results were staggering. Out of the 293 subjects, all Kratom users reported having a dependence problem, with 55% reporting their dependence as severe and 45% as moderate dependence. These problems included a myriad of complaints ranging from failing to abstain, needing to use Kratom daily, having to increase the dose, maintaining a constant dose, or claiming that they have better social functioning on Kratom. Now, for my opioid-addicted patients, these reports should sound very familiar. The subjects also described their withdrawal symptoms similar to many of the complaints found with opioid withdrawal. Nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, sweating, abdominal pain, but also included hiccups and tremors. The withdrawals were not limited to physical symptoms. They included psychological symptoms ranging from sadness to anger. Reports of cravings range from 23% experiencing low cravings versus 77% with high cravings. But as in opioid addiction, only 2% of the subjects sought help. In this study, the evidence was clear that Kratom use for more than six months led to dependence and addiction, making it difficult for men in this study to reduce or quit their Kratom use. These findings have made me consider Kratom 
to be legalized opium and a product that I highly advise my patients not to use. Remember, both kratom and opium are naturally occurring substances, but natural doesn't mean safe. Hemlock, cyanide, snake venom, and even poisonous mushrooms are all natural substances that can kill. To date, I've had three patients contact my office for nothing other than kratom addiction. In one highly motivated patient, I successfully tapered him off of kratom with an eight-week regimen. As of this recording, he remains sober eight months and counting with no issues. The second patient was the first patient to contact my office for help with kratom addiction. She was concerned that the DEA would consider Kratom a Schedule I drug and she would lose access to her Kratom. She revealed to me that she started Kratom to help her with her opioid addiction, but she soon found that her addiction to Kratom was equally as bad as opioids. I developed a tapering plan for her, and despite assuring her that she would not experience any withdrawal symptoms, she never initiated the treatment. The last patient was a patient that I successfully tapered off of opioid in Suboxone. However, he reported switching to Kratom towards the end to help mitigate some of the withdrawal symptoms he had. The last time we talked, he reported to me that he was experiencing new onset seizures, which are known symptoms of Kratom toxicity. It is my belief that the DEA will soon make Kratom a Schedule I drug. I encourage everyone to not initiate use of this herb. You may quickly find yourself addicted to this herb. As with any other drug, it is impossible for me to predict who will be addicted and who won't be addicted. But the safest thing to do is to just avoid using Kratom. I'd rather you be safe than sorry.